Hello there. This is the next part in the complete game art tutorial series. Today we're going to do some animations. At the moment you see the screen as we left off with the key poses. We have the idle, we have the run, and the run with the gun. The run is modified a little bit. I angled the head a little bit down so he is looking more like he's going forward. Today I'm trying to cover those three animations. It's just those three as, let me just show you the sheet all up to get everything into the game looking half decent. I ended up with 100 frames. So I'm gonna split this tutorial, see how I go and uh, show you how to do the basics today with the idle and the run. To give you an idea where we are going with this, let me show you the idol which we have here. It's a sequence of animated PNG files. So we have movement here, the head is going up, the arms are going in. What looks like a huge movement, if scaled down to the real size, you hardly see it. When you do animations like that, that get scaled down in the end, remember that animations look a lot less strong when scaled down. It might just be moving one pixel while in the version you work in, in Inkscape, everything can be zoomed in and looks like a tremendous motion. While I'm at it, let me show you the run which looks like this and like this in the small size. So this is the 48 by 48 pixels that are going to be used in the game. And this is the last large 512 by 512 export. You can see that the gaps between the frames are quite big here. So using them in this size would require a few more frames to make the animation look smooth. While in the small one, we get away with just the eight frames here. The animations might be looking a little blurry in the video, so make sure to go over to the blog. I posted the GIF animations there and you can see them a little bit crisper. Let's start with the idle now. I have the idle on a separate layer here. We take the others off and added another layer called box. This is just a visual help as well as a tool to make sure when I export everything I get the right file size for everything so I won't have to individually scale and place images afterwards when resizing in GIMP, Photoshop or whatever bitmap tool you'd like to use to do the rescaling. So this is our character for the idol, our first frame we want the arms to go in, so let's start by creating a new layer. I'll call it idle2. And then select my character and copy and paste him in place. So when I turn this one off, I still see it. And here I can say, okay, the opacity of that layer. I'll just set the opacity to 20%. So I'll see a little bit of this one and I should be fine with this one. So when I move the arm inwards here, you can see underneath here just the darker edge of the first frame. So the arms move inward a little bit. Then we select everything but the legs and move them up. One, two, that should do the trick. So when I switch between those two layers, just turning the top layer off, you can see the little guy moving just a little bit between those two frames. Now we can lock and we can hide layer one and copy our character from here and put him onto the next layer, which will be idol three. So put in there 
lock layer 2. That way when I select elements, I won't accidentally select elements on a lower layer. So we're just working on layer 3. And I set the opacity of this one down as well. So, come on. Nope. Not selected there. So let's do it again. Here we go. Okay. And we zoom back in. So we have our little guy. Now, layer 2 and 3 work fine. And we continue with the animation. So the arm moves in even more. And the same on the other side. And the whole thing moves up. And I forgot to move the belly just a little bit, so we'll just expand it a little bit here and go back to this layer and do the same thing here, just a little bit less. So now he's going up and there should be some motion, maybe we can make this even bigger. That's the kind of exaggeration you need in order to make it look good in the small size afterwards. So, we got three frames. Let's continue hide those and copy and paste them to the next layer. So, I have a new character on layer four and set this layer 3 to less opacity and lock it so the arms moving even further there we go and the whole thing goes back up and if I turn layer 3 on you can see the different steps for those kind of animations, try to keep the steps even. And here we see now that there is a gap with our belly, so we need to make the belly bigger. And probably do the same thing for the layer. I didn't notice that there was a gap there. So let's bring that down as well. And there we go. So between layer 3 and 4, it is just going up a little bit more. Okay, now if you want to, you can also move other parts like the eyebrows, just change a little bit. So in this frame below, we change them just Okay, and here we go. And twenty-two we can have just a tiny bit so the animation builds up. Okay, he's probably breathing in really heavily to go up that far. I think that should work and we can set all our layers to 100% let's see they're all there except for the last one so 100% on each now the box will come in handy we unlock that layer and set its opacity down to zero we have an invisible box I'll hide the layers except for our first idol. If I select everything now, you can see the outline of the box that is invisible, but it acts as the size for the export. So if I go to export PNG images in the file menu, it opens up the pop-up. The part we want to export is just selection. I set the size to 512 by 512, that way I can scale it down to 
whatever file size is needed afterwards in the bitmap program and I select where I want to export it to and the file name for this one is idle1 and we click on export okay we should have our first file now let's do the same thing with the next layers so in the end we should have idle1, idle2, idle3 and idle4 all having the same file size of 512 by 512 pixels I hope you can see that if the mouse goes over but these frames can now be scaled in any bitmap program you choose and get them to the right file size you might have to adjust the dpi for some engines that require a set dpi of for example 72 dpi but that's something that's a lot easier to do in gimp or any other tool for that purpose so this took a little longer than i thought it would so i'm gonna leave the run for the next video which will follow shortly because i'm starting to really enjoy this and i hope you had fun watching this one more coming up soon enjoy <laughs>